All right, uh, let's talk about the homework. Let me get forward. And so if there's a problem you want me to go over, let me know. Which one? Number two? Okay. Number two. All right, so we have. Three, this is 14, this is 23. Uh, they also called this the slant height is 14, which doesn't really help me. And the depth is 28. Okay, we want to find the volume, right? Okay, so what's what are my bases of this? What are my what are my bases of the, the 3D figure? Is it the top and the bottom being the, the squares on the top and the bottom or the rectangles on top and the bottom? Is it the trapezoids on the front and the back? No, top and bottom. No, it's the trapezoids. Oh. Base all, it not only has to be parallel, it has to be the same size for the most part, by definition. So if I find the area of this trapezoid here, I can then move along with my problem. So it's going to be volume equals base times height. Okay, things that I can start plugging in here. I can plug 13.3 in for the height. I don't know what the area of the base is at this point, so we have to get there. Okay, so if I wanted to find the area of the trapezoid, area of the trapezoid is equal to one half base one plus base two times that height. Wrong here. Yeah. Wrong here then. It's what? 28. 28, thank you. Yeah, Joy. Sorry about that. That was the depth to it. Okay. So, one half base one, base two is 23, and then the height is 13.3. So, that's going to give me what? Uh, 37. 37 times 13.3. I don't know, but I want half of that. Did I say that, write that right? Yeah. Hear that right? Did I write what I heard correctly? Okay, so that's the area. So I'm going to plug that in here. So then multiply that 28 together. Six, seven, eight, 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 eight. Is it the way that it So, so let's make sure we're okay with it. Um, if I were to find my base, my base has to be parallel and same size. Huh? Because that's how deep it is. So this front part here and this back part and back, the front and the back are my bases. My base doesn't mean it has to be sitting down on it. It's just what's parallel and the same size. The top and bottom can't be because this is they might be parallel, but they're not the same size. And these two sides are parallel, they might be the exact same size, but they're not parallel. Cool. What other questions have we come across? Yeah. Nine. 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 Number nine. Boy, I'd be an artist if I could draw. Oops. So that's 30. The depth is 14. This is 18. This is 24. This is all in kilometers, right? But we want to find the volume. So is this a pyramid or a prism? Prism. Prism with a base of what? A triangle base, okay? 
So my bases are the front and the back triangle. So in order to find the area of the triangle, I know that that has to be 1 half base times height. Remember, base and height are perpendicular to each other. Okay, so that's 18 here. That's also 24 here. So I'm going to go 1 half base times height of the triangle. So what's 9 times 24? How much? 216. 216? Okay, so that's the area of the triangle. That make sense? Yeah. So how deep is this object? 14. 14. So my volume is base times height. Why is it not one third? Because it's a pyramid. It's not a cone, right? No, it's not a pyramid. It's not a pyramid. It's, it's a prism. Thank you. I'm sorry. The other two words. So that times 14. How much? 3,024. 3,024 cubic units? Huh? Oh, yeah. It is kilometers. Sorry about that. I got so used to writing you. So kilometers cubed. Hmm. Yeah. 12. Well, oh man, find the volume of that. Let's see, how many sides is that? That's six. Okay. So we're eventually going to have to use one-third area of the base times the height, yes? So the side length is 17. So this is going to generate me a triangle here. It's a right triangle. Okay, so this is my apothem here. How long is this distance if the whole distance is 17? 8.5, okay. Uh, this is a hexagon, so it's a 30, 60, 90. So this has to be my 60 degree angle. So let's pull that triangle out and look at it. I'm just expanding a little bit. My apothem is here. This is my radius. I don't really need my radius. And that's an 8.5 here. And that's a 60. That'd be a 30. So this has got to be 8.5 root 3, right? Yeah. So the area is 1 half anus. I get one half. The apothem is 8.5 root 3. I don't have the paper in front of me. Does it, they leave it in root, root 3 as far as the answer? No. no. It doesn't give the answer? Uh, the answer is 7,497. Okay, so that was from my. Yeah, so they're going to multiply that out eventually. Number of sides, six <laughs> sides. Length of each side is 17. Okay, um, when you do this, please incorporate the root 3 as when you're doing the math, so 8.5 times root 3 times 6 times 17, whatever that answer is, divide by 2. Yeah, so, well, no, it's just 8.5 root 3, and then you can hit enter, and it automatically multiply together. Times 6 times 17, enter, and then divide by 2. Does anybody have that? 1,000. No. No. Okay. Wait, um, are you talking about the apartment? Yeah. I got 480. 408. 
root 3. Do me a favor, go 408, square root 3 on your calculator, and then it'll give you the decimal approximate. Seven o six point eight. Seven o six point eight. Seven o six six eight. Yeah. Okay. So the area of the base is seven o six point six eight. The height we have is thirty times one third. So my answer should come out to seven o six six point eight. Uh, Cubic feet. No? Cool. Okay, let me make sure. Make sure I have that. The 30. I have the height. All right, let's do this. 8.5. By two times six times seventeen. Seven. Ah. This should have been seven fifty point seven fifty point eight four times. Is this the answer? That's what I got. What? Something like that. We might have made an error on our computation. Can I move the three? There's, well, you, you, I absolutely could, yes. Um, but because that's a special right triangle, because it's a hexagon. Oh, did they have? Oh, the answer sheet gives you the atomic constant, but the oh, homework sheet doesn't. And the apothem is not 8.5. Yeah. So they gave you. some totally different apothem. Yeah. But the homework sheet didn't. Yeah. This one did. Yeah. What did they get to spend the apothem on? 14.7. 14.7? Is that 8.5 the same? It is 14.7, yes. Times 6 times 17 divided by 2, 750.84. And then the height, I think there might be an error. There might be an error on that sheet because I agree with their apothem. Number of sides, length of each side is 17. We have it. I think they made an error. I would say this is the answer right here. And the reason I say that is if I get this for my sur my surface area, which that should be, if I do this, that becomes 10. So 10 times that becomes. So I think there might be an error on the answer sheet, which we make mistakes. What else? Yeah. Okay, there you go. So it's another hexagon. 
So if I were to look at my hexagon, a little bit larger. Here's my apophthegm. This has to be a 60 degree angle. And if the whole side length was 29, that means that this has to be 14.5. Is that all right? So if I go backwards, how opposite of 30 is that? So that would have to be 14.5 root 3. So I have enough information. Will somebody tell me what 14.5 root 3 is? Twenty-five point one. Thank you. Number of sides six. Length of each side twenty-nine. Okay, twenty-five point one times six times twenty-nine, all divided by two. Six seven. Say it one more time. Six seven seven point seven. Is that right? All right. So then I have six seven seven point seven times the height of our object looks like 26. So 6, 6 7, 7. 7 times 26. What is? This is not right? That is right. Try one more time. OK, real quick. So go 25.1 divided by 2. Enter. Times 6, times 29, enter. 2,183. 2,183. Do we have a second on that? Yes. Okay, so we might have been off there. Sure. You know me, I sometimes I just break out the story. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I mean, like designated like designated PowerPoint. To go to PowerPoint. Yeah. People were calling on the phone, going, "Yo, what's up?" I do have Duke's cell number. I don't know if it's still good. Call him, I guarantee. Call him, say, "Dude, still got that bruise?" No, and Duke, he'd be like, "Yo, oh, what's up, Mister?" Yeah, he's. I got 19. What do you get? 1957. How would you get that? 26. Yeah. I don't know. It's 56,776. 56,176. 76.2. 76.2? Yeah. On the other sheet? Cool. Oh, wait, no, okay. Tell us, tell us. I was talking about the. <coughs> Speak up, Donna. Tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us. I wasn't saying for like the answer. Oh, okay. We good? We agree? So, this is not the correct answer. This would have been the correct answer there. What else? Yeah. Eight. 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 Sorry, I keep stealing stuff. Whatever reason. All right, number eight. Pentagon bases, right? Twenty-nine centimeters. Oh wait, nine, which one am I on? Three. And then this depth here is twenty-six centimeters. Right? All right. It is a pentagon. So, n minus two times one hundred and eighty would find all of these to be one hundred and eight degrees. Which means if I draw my uh, my apothem in, which I don't know and I draw that, my right triangle, this angle has to be 54 degrees. 
And this side length has to be half of 29, which is going to be 14.5 centimeters. Is that okay? So then area equals one half. Apothem. Oh, we don't know. We have to figure that out. Uh, so I have 19 point. So that, I would say like tangent 54 is equal to apothem over 14.5. 19.96. And is your calculator in degrees? Just want to double check on that. That's what I got. Okay, I just want to make sure that happened. So now I know my apothem is 1996 with a decimal in there. Uh, so that's the apothem. Number of sides is 5. Length of each side is 29. All right, let's do some calculating. So just make sure, and some of you might still be flustered on this. If you multiply 19.96 times 5 times 29, Get an answer and then divide by 2. That would be the same answer as if you were to take half of 1996 and then multiply that times 5 times 29. So what do you get? 1,447.1. Did I hear that right? Yeah. Cool. And that's in square centimeters. So then my volume is base times height. So my base is 1,447.1 times my height, which is 26, and whatever those multiply out to. 37,624. 37,624. Anything else? Number six. Cool. Number six. We have a triangle. So it has, it looks like depth of four. Each of these sides are seven and seven. And this is 11, I think. And then they tell us we have, looks like we have a height here of 4.3. And this is a little bit all in inches. Is that all right? All right, so we have a pyramid or a prism. Prism, their bases are both triangles. So let's find the area. Good, I don't divide by three. So let's find the area of this triangle out front. So area of a triangle is one half base times height. So you have one half base of 11 times a height of 4.3. Don't know. You guys got the magic. 23.65. 23.65. 23.65 uh, square inches. So the volume is base times the height. So the area of the base is 23.65. The height is 4. 94.6 cubic inches. Cool. Everyone get that done? Yeah. All right. So develop an understanding of both the surface area and volume of the sphere. First review the problem. Okay. Pretty sure. So C, A, P. If this is 70 degrees right here, we would be able to find the height pretty easy by using something called trig. So I have opposite and hypotenuse. So that would be sine. So if I did sine 70, I would get h over 20. I'd be able to solve for the h. Okay? You guys have the calculator, so go for it. Say that one more time. 18.79. Thank you. And then... We could use trig again to find the radius, or we could use Pythagorean theorem. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm just going to use Pythag or I'm going to use cosine. I'll say cosine of 70 degrees is equal to r over 20. So then I get 20 cosine 70. And what do I get there? 6.84. If you use the Pythagorean theorem, you get right around the same ballpark. So then, if you're trying to find the volume of this, 
volume is equal to one third area of the base times the height. So you get one third area of the base, which is pi r squared. So pi r happens to be 6.84 squared times the height, which is 18.79. So if you multiply that all out, don't forget your 6.84 squared. Don't forget to divide by 3, and you get the volume. Okay? Let's move. A sphere. 3D circle. Oh, wait. I bet you they have. I bet you. Set of all points in space equidistant from a given point. So it's a 3D circle is what it is, what I just said. The center of a sphere is a given point. The radius is segment from the center to the, any point. So the radius goes any direction in 360 degrees in every direction. It's 3D. And the diameter is the segment that goes from one side of the ball to the other side of the ball that also includes going through the center of the ball. It would be the longest segment you could create. There's an infinite amount of segments in a sphere. Diameters. Cool? Seem good so far? So again, a sphere is a 3D circle. Okay, so if you take a point in space and you go three dimensions a distance of three dimensions all the way around it, up, down, left, right, front, back, north by northeast, south by southwest, things like that. Cool so far? Everyone happy? May I move on? Here we go. All right. The surface area of a sphere. Oh, it's a tough one. Ready? Ready? Four is the constant. Pi is another constant. Four pi r squared, that's all it is. So area of a circle is pi r squared, right? So, but, so that's the area of a circle. And then the surface area of a sphere is four, is four times pi r squared. Oh, you integrated. It's pretty simple. What you do is you increase your exponent by 1, and then you divide the whole thing by it. So you get 4 thirds pi r cubed. That's, I mean, it's simple. I mean, and this is the first derivative of the volume. That's all. Okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. It's just calculus. Stop. Yeah, Don. All right. You don't like calc? All right. Oh, wait. Who do I do? Down here? Nope, nothing down there. Crazy people. Crazy people. All right, find the surface area of the sphere. So remember, the surface area is 4 pi r squared. So if we have to have 12 here, so I go 4 times pi times 12 squared, which I get 144 times 4 pi, which, oh, I don't know, 576? 576 pi uh, cubic centimeters. So if you wanted to paint the whole outside of the ball, you would use 576 pi cubic centimeters of paint. Yeah. But it's surface area, so wouldn't it be squared? It is squared. Shoot. Yes. So I squared it and cubed it. That's squared. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Can you just do diameter squared? Diameter squared. Shh. Because 24 squared is 576. If you had a radius of 5. Oh, I think you might have gotten lucky in that one. But then, like, the two things on the worksheet also were the same. So you're saying, hang on, shh. You're saying diameter squared pi. Because I did that with 5 and with 6. Okay. I need to double check on this. I'll double check. Let me let me find out for you. Okay? Shh. Some of you are screwing around too much. Volume of a sphere. Oh, it's simple. Four thirds pi r cubed. Done. Volume of a sphere. Four thirds pi r cubed. 
So look, if you take the derivative, you bring this down front, you get a three out front, you make that lower by one, then you cancel the threes, you get four pi r so squared, I'll, so you get the surface Say that again slowly. What? <laughs> I was just doing the derivative. <laughs> Come on, you guys will see it soon enough. It's awesome. This is the, because of sphere, surface area of a of the sphere and the volume of the sphere is when calculus all clicked for me. It was like, <gasps> so. Wait, do it, say that again. So in order to take the derivative, you basically, the quick easy way is you look, bring the exponent down here, make it three here. Lower the exponent by one, make that a second. The threes would cancel out, give me four, four pi r squared. Oh, that makes sense. That's the surface here. Right, so. The reason why it works is when you do the derivative of something, you take it from a higher exponent to one degree lower. So you're going one dimension lower. So the dimension of volume is third power. The dimension of surface area is, sec surface area is second power. So it just happens to work in a perfect sphere situation. Yeah. So you can find the volume right now? Yeah. This is not the test, right? The not the derivative, no. All right, four thirds pi r cubed. That's volume. So I get volume is equal to 4 over 3 pi. What is 2 cubed? Don't shout all at once. So then I get 32 over 3 pi cubic units. Cubic units. That's it. That's all. Let's see. What do we have? Is there more? Nope. Find the surface area in the solid. Okay, hey, what do I have on top of this cone? Ice cream. Half, of ice cream. Half of a sphere and ice cream. Yes, I like that. All right. So find the surface area of the solid. So if I wanted to find the surface area of the top, we're talking about half a sphere. So it's the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. If I wanted to find half of that, I would divide it by 2, so that becomes 2 pi r squared. So let's find the surface area of just the top part, which would be, I'm plugging 6 in, so that's 36, 72 pi. Okay, that's the surface area of just the top. How do I find the surface area of the cone? Pi RL? No, I don't want volume. I want surface area. Oh. So surface area is pi RL, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so pi I know is pi. R is 6. L is 10. So that is 60 pi. So that's 60 pi. And then I add 60 pi and 72 pi together to get 132 pi square units. Find the volume of the solid. Oh my goodness. Find the volume of the solid. So the volume of the cone is one third area of the base. Base is pi r squared times the height. Do I know the height? Well, it's the sky. It should be eight because that's my three, four, five doubled, right? Okay. And then if I wanted to find the volume of here, it's only half of it, so it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. What's half? How do I do half of a denominator, half of a fraction? You double the denominator, so I get 4 over 6 pi r squared. Reduce when you can. That becomes 2 thirds pi r squared, or pi r cubed. What's 6 times 6 times 6? 216. Right. I'm so smart. Uh, what's 216 times 2? 432, uh, good. 432. Over 3 pi. Uh, okay, so that is the volume of the top. Oh, we have to still find the volume of that. So I get 1 third times pi r squared, so 36 times 36 times the height, which is 8. So then 3 goes, and that's 12. 12 times 8 is 96, so I get 96 pi. Put 96 pi over 3. Let's see, let's triple it. What's 96 times 3? So it becomes 96 plus 432 pi 288 over 3. So if you change that to 288 over 3 
plus 432 pi over 3. Then you can add those together. So it's over 3 still. That's uh, there. Carry the 1. That's 12. 5, 6, 7, 7, 20 pi. Can I reduce over 20? This? Yeah. Put that over 1, multiply by 3, multiply by 3. Common denominator. How much? So 240 pi cubic units is your volume of that ice cream cone. Yo. Uh, tomorrow's quiz, are we going to have to do no. surface area and linoleum area? Uh, probably, uh, it'll probably just be over 11.5 and 11.6. This is 11.7. All right, find the surface area of the hemisphere with a solid bottom. Does that mean that it works out and it has a solid? No, I'm sorry. Sorry, I shouldn't have went there. All right, and then find the ball. All right, so what more we got? Oh, that's, that's it, huh? All right, so I have 4 thirds pi r cubed, so then it's actually 4 over 6 pi R cubed to find the volume, right? And then if I wanted to find the surface area, it is 4 pi R squared, but divided by 2 in this case because 2 pi R squared, it's because it's only half of it, plus another pi R squared for the, the bottom circle. That's pi R squared down there, right? All right, so here is, here is the good news. You have the worksheet on, I can't see it, I can't see it. So 11.7 worksheet is due Friday. Okay, there is a quiz tomorrow on 11.5 and 11.6. Cool? Keep it all. Works for me, kid. All right.